We're going to quickly go through the vicious circle. How many of you have surely gotten this from <laughs> Johan at one point or another in your life, except for a few of you that may be here for the first time? <clears throat> Most of you seen the so-called vicious circle? Actually, where this started was my own vulnerability, but I was doing this back in 1965, 66. Because I was, it was my job to teach uh, some medical students about uh, psychophysiological medicine, okay? the, the, the interface between mind and body, which was being called uh, in those days psychophysiological medicine. And we were trying to talk about what caused the problems, and I wasn't sure how I was going to do the lecture, but at that time I was going through what you had to go through if you were going to be a counselor or a therapist. In those days, you yourself had to go through it and do your own work, so to speak, have your own therapy before you were allowed to go mess around with anybody else's therapy. And so I was working on mine, and so I decided the best example I had that I could use for the class of understanding this was my own. What surprised me was when the class was over, there was about five or six or seven of the students started to gather around the podium, and I, I thought maybe they were getting ready to either lynch me or do some act of violence or whatnot. And they, what they said to me, they said, that isn't just your story. And what I discovered is they began to identify it and say, well, that's true of me as well. I have probably talked about this over a thousand times in five continents over the years. And still people are finding themselves in it. So, but very quickly, I'm going to start with an assumption that you're valuable just the way you are. You don't have to change a thing for you to be valuable as a human being. It's on that level that politicians write constitutions and declarations of independence. It's the notion that everyone is, quote, created equal. Even though we know in the next breath there's no two people equal on hardly any subject you name. So if somebody says to you, are you equal or unequal, you're going to say, Yes, exactly. <laughs> now, what's been lost is, as we've gone to work, everybody's focused on the part of us that's unequal. I.e., if we go for a job, and I type, you know, 40 minutes of words a minute, and you type 75 without any mistakes, guess who they want to hire? We're not equal. I cannot equal your skill or your capacity. The problem is, I, the other person is more, quote, valuable to the company, so to speak, because they can produce twice as much work. But, but the conclusion in all of that is, is that somehow, when it comes to being a human being, I'm a lesser one. That's dead. And that's at the heart of everything that causes us to so quickly go to our survival instinct and compromise our immune systems because we immediately think if I'm not perfect in every way, if I can't equal everybody at everything they do, that you won't like me for everything I say, you're living in a world you're bound to be defeated in because you can't please everybody. And what's unfortunate is there are people who think you ought to please them all the time. And what they don't understand is they're not very pleasing. Well, they're getting you to be pleasing. <laughs> so what I want us to understand, without going into too much detail, I believe sincerely, with all my heart, that everybody in this room has intrinsic worth. And nobody can give it to you. Nobody can take it away from you. But who can take it away from you? Everybody see that? Uh, oh, Eleanor Roosevelt, the, the so-called great president of the United States back in the 30s and 40s, 
had a beautiful phrase. She said, nobody can put you down without your permission. Nobody can put you down without your permission. So that if you begin to feel negative inside, guess who's judging you? This is important. You're telling you something in your head. Oh, I screwed up. I can't believe I was so dumb to do that again. I've been trying to get rid of that habit for years. You ever say anything like that to yourself? Mm -hmm. Who's judging who in that situation? You are doing it. You are the author of your own negative emotion. And most people don't want the responsibility or to accept the freedom for that truth. They'd rather be a slave, a victim. Woe is me, I never get anything right. Just can't do this. What's wrong with me? Is you using your head talk to put you down. And the interesting thing is, when you try to put you down, you're going to go negative inside, and you don't have any choice of that. Because somewhere, somehow, there's a giant part of you that understands, as a human being, you are valuable. And when you counter that, when you say, no, I'm not, I've never found anybody in all these years who can reject themselves and feel good at the same time. That's empirical evidence. Now, anybody want to test it right now? I'll test it with you. Anybody? I will help you feel negative about yourself. <laughs> I promise. Huh? You want to do that? Yeah. Well, you've already confessed to what it does in you, mm -hmm. right? When you talk to me. Mm -hmm. But if I would say to you, I have seen some dumb things in my life, but you have set a whole new record. <laughs> you want me to go more? <laughs> I was just kind of the issue is, if I say that to her, if she accepts it, if she accepts it and judges herself then, she will feel negative. Depression, is that very big in Europe? Yeah. It's the number one presenting complaint to psychiatrists in the United States. Mm -hmm. Depression is out of control. If you look at antidepressant drugs, they are the most sold drugs we have in our country. Yeah. It is rampant. We it are is not, rampant. We are not to psychiatrists, but to employers. <laughs> okay. Well, I've seen a lot of psychiatrists who were depressed, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get so depressed talking to depressed people. <laughs> but what I want us to, to look at is you start off having your own intrinsic worth. I can't give it to you, and God only knows I cannot take it away from you. There's no way I can do that. But you can let me do that because you take something I say and decide, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm not okay. You're doing it. You ought to just understand, I'm a screwed up American. What would I know? All right, so it's the, the rejection of your intrinsic worth that causes you the pain. And what you begin to believe is you can get your worth back how? By approval of the others. Approval of others getting it right next time, getting some more applause, having people like you and saying, you're so wonderful and handsome, so strong or so petite and beautiful, whatever the case may be. If you think your worth inside is dependent on that, you have set yourself up to play a game that virtually everybody on this planet is playing. And that is now you think you have to get your worth out here, as opposed to you start with your worth and you choose whether you're going to give it away or not. I did a lot of work in high performance teaming and my bias is if you've got a team of players who know their intrinsic worth, 
They don't have to sit around playing the game of defending themselves or one-upping one another or trying to show I'm better than you are or I'm just as good as you are. If that's the game we're playing, we're wasting time. And I'm on the defensive, really. If you could look inside me, I want you to like me, to accept me, to make me a part of the team, blah, blah, blah. And why do I want that? Because I feel negative because I think there's something wrong with me otherwise. We can look at that tomorrow as the day goes on. The bottom of rejection is hurt. It hurts, literally. We know now from studies of the brain that when you have a hurt response, psychologically you process it in your brain, the same place you would process pain coming from somebody <coughs> who hits you hard enough or you break a bone in your leg, or something else hurts you. We process psychological pain in the same areas of the brain that we do physical pain. Therefore, it is a very hurtful process. And it's what triggers, and what's missing from this slide, is fight, flight, freeze. Freeze is the word that's missing. Um, We'll, we can send you a new set of slides and fix that if you'd like. But the issue is, um, who's in charge? Who's making this happen? But who do you normally blame? You hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. And we teach our children that from day one. That somehow the other person is causing it to happen. Or we start, and that sets off the blame-shame game, but we'll, we'll get around to that. What's really happening there is I'm trying to control the situation so I can feel good about myself, feel comfortable, feel relaxed, because I don't enjoy the negativity that's going on in me, and it's a control issue. And clearly, if I find myself being put down by you, and I don't know how to do anything about it. I feel out of control. I want to blame you for causing me to feel that way. Which means then, I've got to try what? To control you. Now my energy is expended on getting the other person to change. Good luck. Your spouses have worked on you a long time. Look at the poor job they did. Right? And what we, get, what we get into is the thing we call the culture game. That's where whatever you learn to be the rules of the game in the situations in which you find yourself. How you grew up in your home had a set of rules, and when you violated them, what did mom or dad do? That's how you begin to know. I work at a certain corporation, a company, or I work for the police, or I work for somebody else. You have a set of rules internally. And what happens when you violate those rules? Now, part of what I'm not saying is I'm not saying rules are always bad. But if you go around getting depressed over the rules, that's not useful. Of course there are rules, and some of them are dumb as you can name them. Some of them are pretty good. They save your life. But on the other hand, they're just rules that you can play by, or if you choose to not play by, then you realize there will be consequences. But if you value yourself enough, you'll accept the consequences, realizing that's just the way the game is played. I'll figure out how to play it somewhere else. But I'll own it. I'm responsible. I'm a free human being. But you find people who get depressed are blaming everything out here as to why I'm in the mess I'm in in here. Big difference. Do you want to be in charge of your life, free? Somebody once said, seek the truth. The truth, the real truth, and it'll set you free. As opposed to, I'm a victim. So we set up demands and expectations on ourselves and everybody around us. We find out that we're quickly frustrated because they don't understand the game. I set out early in life with my wife, bless her heart, 
She had learned a lot of good things about how to pick the right guy and all that stuff, but she had never learned how to be the world's best wife. So being the kind of guy I was, I set out to help her. What else could you do? I mean, I'm a nice guy, so I tried to help her on how to be a better wife. <laughs> now, for some reason, she found that not fitting the best way to have a husband. I mean, husbands aren't supposed to tell you how to be a wife. And so now you got the so-called vicious circle. I blame her, she blames me. <laughs> then you walk off feeling guilty, oh, I, and then you come back, and you start it all over again. We have, we, we're finally, we're getting near finishing it now, just after 59 years. <laughs> what happens is when you get frustrated, you'll hear people say they're frustrated. That is not an emotion. Frustration literally means in the psychological world, you had a goal you were trying to get to, and you're blocked or obstructed from getting there. In other words, I want to control my wife to be the kind of wife I want her to be. I'm not succeeding, so I'm losing control of what's going on, and so I'm saying, what's wrong with me that I can't get her? Um, after all, what I want to do for her is in her own best interest for crying out loud. Why is she so dumb? I mean, why is she having so much difficulty? <laughs> I know you don't recognize any of this. And so the issue is, then starts the blame shame. When you're blaming people, you're usually hostile with them. And you're blaming them for what? For hurting my feelings. I'm hurting your feelings? Notice who, well, you don't even know where your hurt's coming from. So do, can you be authentic if you don't even know where your own hurt, guilt, shame <clears throat> is coming from? If you think it's over there and it's actually originating here, what does that say? Sounds a little crazy. That's exactly what it is. We're all crazy. What it does then is to lead to fight the same fight, flight, angry thing over here. A little child, when they really get angry, might do what? Throw a temper tantrum. But you're clear that they're angry, are you not? Or if a kid's afraid, you know the kid's afraid. When you get to be an adult and you're sitting in your boss's office and you're afraid or you would like to smack that son of a gun right in the mouth, but you realize you're not going to do that. <laughs> so would you tell me, where does the chemistry go? You, you pump the same chemistry that's necessary for life. You pump it into your veins. You squeeze your adrenals. And once you do that, the whole body system of chemistry shifts for fight or run. But you're just going to sit there and smile. You've got to process that energy somewhere. And what we end up doing is just forcing it out of the system in places where it was never designed to go. It goes into the cardiac system. And so it might push your pressure up. It may end up building irritation inside the walls that eventually fills in with plaque. It may be that you do something else. You might jump it into your GI tract, your gastrointestinal. I, you know, I'm t I can't stomach this place anymore. Or you are a pain in the, well, that's another part of the anatomy, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> The issue is, you're asking those chemicals to go out through other systems that were not designed for it, and the, the biggest one compromised is your immune system. And you haven't even introduced a bacteria. All you've done is introduce an idea that says that person is hurting my feelings. So finally what we get is the heart of your blind spot. The hardest place for you to see something in the world is right there about your inadequacy. That part of you, you're trying to hide. And most of the time, we're so good at hiding it from other people, we also get good at hiding it from ourselves. Once you're unaware of your own blind spot, you now, there will be something, how many of you are familiar with AA? That's called Alcoholics Anonymous. Have you ever heard of that? Their people have a great saying. It says, spot it, you got it. In other words, I see somebody do something, and I'm immediately upset by it. You know why I'm upset? It isn't about them. It's the fact they're doing something that I've wrestled with, don't like in myself, and here they are reminding me. Who do they think they are bringing up my stuff in public? 
The issue is, if I were vulnerable, not afraid of it, and like myself anyway, it wouldn't make any difference. I'd say, oh, there goes one. It's got the same problem I used to have. Maybe I can give them some help. Maybe I can't. But I won't worry about it. We get into psychosocial issues in terms of how we interact and relate to other people. We get into cultural issues. We take it out on other races, ethnic groups, a variety of things like that. And ultimately, it has spiritual implications, which are now being evaluated in the MRIs at Harvard and other places where they've taken in the Dalai Lama's monks and started analyzing what's going on in their heads. Those monks actually show a, a high level of what we call gamma wave material, which we get every time you've had that moment when you've, you've been struggling with something and then you're, you're in the shower singing washing it and you and you and it comes to you there's the answer i was looking for aha that uh, aha is a spurt often accompanied by gamma wave activity in the brain but those monks can make that happen by simply meditating and they can sustain the state for long periods of time it's usually a state that is very peaceful very calm very loving. Well, the other people are so busy fighting, putting up walls, can, losing energy, wondering why they come home fatigued when all they've done is sit at a desk, is an interesting phenomenon. It's what we do to ourselves. We've got an internal war going on all the time. How do you get out of that? Any, do we have any other questions about this? You familiar with this process? Now remember, if, you don't, if you're bothered by this, it's my story, not yours. Okay? My friend Mark, I think we have the same wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have my wife check you out tonight. <laughs> we'll see. We'll just see about that. We good on this? I mean, you understand the basis of this? We are the generators of our own negativity. The good news of that is, I can do something about it if I own it. The bad news is, I have to own it. I wanted you to be the reason I'm the way I am. Not I'm the reason. Start to get in touch with the moment you feel negative. The moment it happens. Instead of, I've seen a lot of people go 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes and they'll go through a whole cycle of emotions, totally unaware that they had any at all. I remember one time I was working with a woman, she was sitting in a chair across from me, and she was like this, and I said, talk to me about your, your husband. Oh, she's and your, your mom and your dad, or I, I, it was a number of people. She said, they were so wonderful, and they did so much for me, and I was really so, you know, she was also suffering from rheumatoid arthritis in her hands and in her legs and ankles. She had no idea just how angry she was. Didn't register a thing. I've talked to a lot of so-called ulcer patients. Now we know that there's other things involved in ulcers. You don't just have a direct correlation with your thought process. But I've seen a lot of them and you'll describe a situation that would normally make some people angry they never even register it. It goes, it just boom. It, they stuff it down inside so fast that they're totally unaware. You know anybody with irritable bowel syndrome? The very word itself tells you something, doesn't it? Irritable. Okay. Arthritis oftentimes, you send little messages to all your body instantly. And if I want to hit you in the, I'm really mad but I'm sitting in your office with a smile on my face, keeping my hand relaxed, it still sent the message. The irritant still is impacting the internal part of my hand. If I keep it up long enough, I will discover I'm good at arthritis and other places. There's a, we could go on and on and on for, with that forever, but we won't. But in any case, we're tearing up our bodies by playing this game. The moment you identify a negative feeling, See if you can, as fast as possible, connect that emotion to some expectation you had 
for how you should be performing or acting or how the situation should be. Such as you've left work at a certain time to go to another place and then you've managed to be late enough and somebody's got the gall to be driving slowly in front of you. Why do they let them out on the street for crying out loud? I gotta get over there and here they are poking. I know you never get angry in your car. But in case you did, who's generating all that? I know you want to blame the other person and beat the horn and do whatever you have to do to get them out of the way. But the point is, you could actually beep your horn without being upset. Ever occur to you? You don't have to carry all that crap inside in order to have the strength to push the horn for crying out loud. Just push it if you're in a hurry and you want them out of your way. But you don't have to be bent out of shape before you're willing to do it. And so we accept all that. We need to understand I had an expectation. You were not supposed to be driving that way in front of me when I'm in a hurry, whatever it may have been. And if you can begin to realize what you're doing, then what you can do is connect that disruption to a sense of I'm not in control. I don't know. I, I don't want to bang his car because I got a brand new car. But I'd like to push him off. Where's my caterpillar tractor? I'll run him off the road. Or whatever the case may be. The issue is I've lost control. Remember I worked all these years being raised by mommy and daddy to be in control all the time. And finally, if you can connect the loss of control to the fact that you're rejecting yourself right now. Eventually, you go from that person driving slow to what's wrong with me. I always pick the wrong street at the wrong time. I can't believe that I'm behind this person and I've turned it all inside. And now I'm into self-rejection and I'm dumping all the chemicals again into my body, which it was not designed to do, because while I'm behind the wheel of a car, I might yell, I could yell loud, but I'm not going to run. And if you pound on the dashboard too often, you start ruining your car. <laughs> Questions. You have to be aware of what is happening, accept the responsibility for making a different choice, and being able to do that in a clean, quick way anytime it happens. So when we leave here today, I can guarantee you will all know exactly what to do, and you'll be doing it by tomorrow. Now, if you believe that, you are definitely in the wrong place. Because you've spent all these years developing your capacity to get mad. Not fix it. Comments, questions? We'll, we'll work on this one. We'll work on this afternoon. So, what we innately know how to do. This is from Buckminster Fuller. I don't know if you remember him or not, but he's kind of an architect and engineer and designer and all that stuff, scientists. He says, if you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. And so I'm not going to get myself frustrated and bent out of shape trying to teach you anything. Are we clear? I'm going to be fine. The question is, are you? That's, that'll be your choice because I can't make it for you. But the issue is, don't try to teach them another way to think. Instead, Give them a tool, the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking. In other words, I'm not interested for a moment in what you think. Well, I am, in case you're thinking about wiping me out over lunch. But the issue is, it isn't what you think, I'm looking at how you think. Okay? So we're not trying to change the content of what you think. All right, so remember those? How are we doing? We're we gonna make it? I gotta check with my timekeeper. He showed some reluctance earlier. No, no carts on the desk, so. Oh, I gotta remember where to look. That's my problem. That's your problem. It's me. Yeah, it's you. It's not you. No, no, no. Huh? <laughs> as long as we're clear. What I want to do in this slide is to look at where 